Hi, I'm Mike. And one of the best things and one of the worst things about uh, living on the ranch is that all I have to do is step out that door and I'm at work. Today, we're going to head out, we're going to take care of the cows this morning, and we're going to load up pigs, take them over to Sturgis, where they will continue their journey of supporting the ranch. So we're now only three days away from the first due date of these cows. We try to schedule all of our traveling, everything else, uh, including, you know, taking pigs and cows and steers and all that kind of stuff um, over to Sturgis before we start calving. So this is actually one of the last few days that I have a chance to maybe even just get away from the ranch. Usually by this time, we would have two or three calves on the ground. I'm not sure what exactly is going on with the cows, but uh, if they're not gonna have them early, that's not a bad thing. I know Aaron is really looking forward to possibly um, finding that first calf here. So while I'm gone today, she's gonna check cows again, and hopefully she can find that first calf. I've gotten a couple emails from people asking about, um, you know, taking these steers and even taking the pigs over to Sturgis and, and how that's not essential travel during this time. But I would argue that it is. Obviously, it's all about feeding people. Our goal is that we can have these steers uh, that we took over last week and the pigs that we're taking over today have them back and in the store within just a few weeks. That will help us feed our local community uh, when meat is, is actually running scarce in the grocery stores. I lost my bail. Let's go back and get it. That's what I get for talking and not paying attention, huh? Oh, we didn't lose our bail, we lost a pin on the spooler. So out here on the spooler, there's a pin that attaches this bar to the other one, and it must have fallen out somewhere over here. If we can find it, I don't think it'll be a major problem. <clears throat> and there it is, right there. Let's try this again. So some have argued that uh, traveling to take steers to butcher, to take pigs to butcher, that's non-essential travel. Like I said, I think it's just, it's about feeding our community and what's more essential than food? You know, manicures, hairdos, maybe for some people, but uh, you're not gonna get too many manicures or hairdos or tattoos or anything else. Um, if you're not eating or your tattoo artist isn't eating. Mm -hmm. 
So another thing you'll notice, and especially if you watch the webcam, which is available on our website, it's totally free. You can watch the, the pasture cam and you could be watching me right now. There's the camera right over there. Um, as I come out and feed is that I'm actually feeding a little bit later on in the morning um, here as we get closer to calving. That kind of has a purpose. There's, there's, uh, uh, there's been studies and everything else showing that the later you feed your cows in the day, the more likely they are to have calves um, during the day. Now you're supposed to start this probably about six months ago, but uh, not a bad idea. So I figured what the heck. And uh, you know, then I get a chance, I get to go out in the morning, check cows, uh, check for babies, all that kind of stuff early in the morning, and then get to have a cup of coffee before I go out and feed. Not a bad deal. Whoever authored that study, by the way, probably felt the same way. All right, we're gonna grab the gator, do a quick drive around really quick, just to make sure there's no cows uh, out doing anything funky, and then we're gonna go grab pigs and get ready to go. You and I are gonna get a whole lot of good time together here over the next few weeks. We're gonna be checking cows a lot. So get used to this view. I do have a, uh, a route that I usually take uh, it's basically a loop that takes me around uh, this this home pasture where they're going to be doing most of their calving. Um, this path kind of gives me the views that I can't see from up high on a hill or anything like that. So it takes me down through some ravines, uh, through some interesting uh, little creek beds, things like that, uh, where they where they like to hide. But it also takes me onto the high points where I can get a good overview uh, of the ranch. And that's why I like to go this way first, uh, because the first thing it does is it takes me to basically what is the highest point in this uh, in this pasture and gives me a nice broad scope view of the entire area. We're almost there. So this is the highest point in this pasture and you can look down and basically take a look around the entire pasture and get a quick glance, glance at what's going on around here and looking for any black dots basically or anything that's out of place as a cow will usually separate herself off to go have her calf, especially right after feeding. So we just take a quick look around, but there's still, there's a lot of coolies over in this area that we have to drive down and through and just make sure that there's nothing going on. And then on the other side of the road over there too. So really quick trip around this time. It doesn't look like there's any cows out and about um, having any calves or doing anything funky. This is one of those hidden little coolies that you can't see from anywhere else unless you happen to drive down here. A little drainage area from one of these ponds. The pond's overflow actually runs down into here. And cows like to come down here and, and have their calves in all this wet, damp pond swamp area. And lots of good hiding spots over here, down here in these little coolies and creek bits. But the nice thing is that after you make this loop, there's really no place else to hide. So what we do now is we'll usually just catch the road back and that'll give us a good view of the rest of the pasture. look good. Hopefully Erin um, has her first calf today. I think that would be a great uh, great thing for her to find. So she's going to check cows while we're gone. Um, our goal is to get the pigs loaded now and get them uh, ready to go to market. Um, 
we have the, uh, we backed up the trailer the other day we got it all set up basically what my what my thought here is I'm gonna grab some uh, some food we're gonna put it in the trailer and that should bring the pigs in and we want to leave pig or we want to leave run behind so that might be the only trick that we're dealing with today is trying to figure out how um, to keep that little guy from getting on the trailer and, and taking a ride that we don't want him to take so let's grab some COB, which is corn, oats, and barley, and a big old treat for these guys, and we'll go uh, put it in the trailer and, and bring them in. No, we already got some pigs in here. How we're gonna do this, we're gonna open this door. Hi, pigs. And what we're gonna do here, initially is try to kick all these guys out so I can close the door. Come on, let's go. Come on, out. Come on, guys. Everybody out. Come on. Everybody out. Okay, now. Move your butts. Come on, move. So if I get this door closed, closed, I can bring the food in, dump out the food, and then let these guys back in, and then lock them in. So you guys stay out. Hey, no, 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 no. Hey, no, 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 stay out. At least for right now. Food is in. We are going to cut open these bags. So that they can come in and eat. And the goal is to get nine of them in here. And keep them in. Okay, let's go in. Come on guys. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You go in there too. That's it. Wow, that was easy. And because Runt is slow to the game, you missed out. But hey, bud, come here. Come here. Hey, do you want a consolation prize? Hey, buddy, I know. Hey. So uh, Runt here has a, uh, has a bad leg, and that's the main reason he's not going with the other pigs. I'm really not sure what to do with him. I think what happened was when he was a piglet, um, somebody stepped on him or something like that, broke his leg, and, we, and there was really no way for us to know, really. Um, so, uh, so the plan is to, uh, to keep him back for a while and, and figure, out, uh, figure out what we want to do with him. And, uh, yeah.
And so we're off once again to Sturgis, South Dakota, this time with a load of pigs that'll come back and fill up the farm store with bacon and ham and all that good stuff. So the question I get asked probably most when I put out a video like these types of videos uh, is, well, there's, there's two different variations of it. There's the, how can you do that? And then there's the, well, I don't think I could do that. Um, and of course that is raising an animal uh, for slaughter. So the way that I look at it is this. Most of us are eating bacon and pork anyway, and most of us are ignoring where it comes from. You just don't think about it. You, uh, you know, you pretend that it's uh, unicorn farts and it falls out of rainbows or whatever, however you get through that. Um, but you also, one of the things you, that you don't want to think about is how that animal is raised. And I can guarantee you, and I'm not bashing any other razor or anything, any other, any other razor or anything, but what I'm saying is that the, there's a difference between that we the way that we raise our animals to the way that an animal is raised in a, in a regular feedlot or or uh, the mass production uh, type of uh, meat and, and beef and pork that that ends up on your table so when people ask me uh, how can you do that what my answer in inevitably is is that uh, it's not easy but we have to do it because we are given a moral obligation and the opportunity to do it the way that we feel is the right way to do it. And that's what's important to me. So when I, 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 I challenge you, and, and, I, and I guarantee that most farmers and ranchers will never ever admit to this to you, but if they raise their own animals for slaughter, you spend months and uh, sometimes years with these animals, and there is not a farmer or a rancher alive who does this for a living and does not uh, feel a little tear swell up in their eye or maybe just a little, a little, uh, a little frog in your throat uh, when this day comes. But there is, um, th there is a satisfaction to the job and that is that we're doing something a way that it needs to be done. And you can tell by, uh, by looking at these pigs that they've had a great life and they will uh, continue on uh, with supporting the ranch and supporting our family and supporting your family. So that's where we find our uh, satisfaction in a job well done. It's not easy, but like I said, if we don't do it, who knows who will. Stick around, we've got one little bit coming up for you. Aaron's gonna be checking cows while I'm gone. Um, also, I'll show you the unloading really quick, but stick around, that's coming up. Make sure that you subscribe, continue with us on our 30 vlogs and 30 days adventure. This is number 11, and uh, we're cruising right through them. I'm losing a little bit of sleep, but you know what, it's all worth it, and it, uh, it, makes, uh, it makes my life a lot better and, and kind of gives me a, uh, a direction and, and something to concentrate on rather than all the other mess that's going on in the world. So thank you very much for hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to head to Sturgis. We'll be there in about uh, two hours. We'll unload the pigs. Aaron's going to be checking cows. That's all coming up. Stumbling out of bed and I still got you in my head from all those pretty words you said. It's like I'm wasted. Every time I see your face, I'm losing track of time and space. I don't know where I am. It's like I'm wasted and I won't waste it. And I promise that I will stand by you forever I can't get you out of my mind I will follow you wherever and I won't waste it So it's pretty nice today, really nice, supposed to start snowing tomorrow, um, but for today it's really nice. So um, hopefully if we do have a cap we won't have any problems because, well, I'm just here by myself. <laughs> and I promise that I, I will stay.
having a calf. I wish somebody would have a calf. It's time to have babies. <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna head back to the house. I am gonna do some baking for the farm store today. If nobody's in labor, they will be fine and don't need checked until Mike gets back from dropping off pigs. But yeah, I mean, everything's, everything's fine here at the ranch.